Hello and welcome to my channel. I want to start with update on a color analyzer project. And today I reassembled the board, but on a MicroPython with the same Adafruit 7341 sensor. And what is crazy good about MicroPython, I can literally communicate directly with the board. I can upload my functions and I can also reuse them. And it can be crazy useful with the communication directly with the board, not only with the prescribed comments, but also with the functions and you can write down your code on the fly. On this week I finished my gain calculations and I also finished the calibration of max and minimum, what you saw in the plots in the previous videos, but now it works directly on the board. And now I can calibrate the maximum which is fully opened and minimum which is fully closed filters and recalculate them to the percentage and as you can see it's kind of worked nice without any problems but this is a relatively simple task. Now I'm outputting all of the eight channels in percents and if you change them you can actually see how the aperture works. And now you see the aperture change actually in a range of the intensity of the light per each channel. This is exactly how the aperture should work. It actually should reduce only intensity and equally on all of the channels. Additional really cool thing with the MicroPython, you can implement some functions on the fly. For example, you can loop some functions and create them inside the code and don't really write anything in the file, just directly on the board command line. So I write down one function, which is plotting some var plot made of stars. And 100 stars means you have 100% on a channel, so it's basically one star is 1%. And as you can see, if I rotate the knobs, I have a response on each channel and the response is quite separated if you look on the specific channels. After closer investigation, you can find out that the channel number 2 is actually our blue channel and it aligns with our 445 nanometer of the blue channel. With the second channel, which is green channel or magenta knob on an enlarger, I have no problems. It's actually standard green and it's in the middle of the spectrum. And in our scale, it's channel number five or even number four. They both works kind of a fine. And as we discussed previously, the most interesting channel is actually cyan channel. And on the cyan channel, it was crosstalk with the, all of the channels. And this is why I make this test. And as you can see, this is full-blown spectrometer calibrated to the halogen lamp in my enlarger. And if I move the cyan channel knob, you can see I move a little bit the first channel and the last three channels. This is quite big a milestone and now I for sure know which channel I need and which group of channels actually correspond to our filters in the enlarger. And on the plot on the right, you can see that not only one channel is shifting, it's actually several of them is shifting. And I found out a little bit more problems with the whole setup. To be sure, I recheck the apertures and let's discuss what I found out. So let's recheck a little bit the whole map of experiments. First of all, I have a one deviation path, which I test the RGB colors. And if we go here and let's check the intensity here, the first thing, yes, it's actually on the border. And if we use only 600 nanometers with something on the red light there, we probably will not reach the filter at all. Because filtering, as you remember, starts in the last two channels and they are both situated a little bit to the right here. Uh, from 650 and to 685, so around this area. So probably nothing will work on this sensor in terms of the red channel. So let's move on back to our experiments with the ratios. And with the ratios it was quite fine and we find out that we can do something with the ratios. And from here I rewrote the test on this sensor and check the range and also make some experience which I showed just to you for now. And I found out that the ADC or response from the sensor not really linear. So it means if I change intensity, I don't really have a split in the numbers. And even if I recalculate the numbers again and change the gain on the sensor, I still have this unlinear curve. And this linear curve is actually not the curve from what I have and what I thought from the wheel. 
and I think the wheel is actually quite linear. I can check it with the expanometer, but I think it's quite linear and this non-linearity is actually the problem of the sensor itself. And so far I'm not sure how to solve it, but what we find out it's effective wavelength and the, for this sensor it's 445 nanometers, 555 nanometers it, and 680 nanometers. I check additionally the linear response of the sensor and it looks like a linear response is quite fine if you change only timing. So for now my brain is a little bit melting so I need a sleep around this one and find out what I can do with the sensor settings and can I change it, can I adjust the gain properly or if I just don't care and use it as a main setup. But additionally, I find out that I need a good diffusion and I need a, some kind of a mixing box after my lens to measure properly the real response and the colors. But in general, the ratio with a different gain, uh, it's quite strange. So you can find out that the range is not really the same split if you change the aperture on the lens. Uh, with exactly the same gain and time. It's not really splitting in half and it's a little bit less. And this is what I don't really like about the whole thing. As you know from the previous videos, I also received the roll of the 500T film from the Sibazalt. And now I need to cut it to sheets and pack them up in my storage. Unfortunately, the whole development and delivery process of the negatives to me back took more than two months and I don't even want to mention how much it costs and because I don't really care about the scans. For me, this role is more precious than the scans. It's kind of losing the whole purpose of this type of development. And in my head, I already have a kind of a strange idea to find up the lab or even make my own lab, which focused on the delivery of the negatives with the calibrated chemicals and with the really good quality of the negative handling and the semi-cleaning conditions for the transport and the packaging of the negatives itself. And anyway, probably already saw from my posts on the YouTube, I already started the coffee account. Usually I don't really like to collect money just for unknown reasons, so and this service is actually quite good and I really like it. It's kind of a micro crown funding. So we can run our local experiments and actually create the videos what you like and basically sponsor me a little bit in terms of the materials. And in future I think I want to make some development of the film for members of our small community. Because for now I need to increase the volume of rotation of chemicals to make it a little bit more cheaper and increase the quality of the development itself. Because now I kind of optimize for developments of the five roles of the film with a one-shot developer, I think this is a really good idea to bundle it once per month, make a huge development for the community members and deliver film back. And probably you already saw I have a huge amount of Array 4 paper and I think I will not consume all of it, so it's probably also a good idea to just repack and sell it with a few batches or with the members of our small community. Not sure how it will roll up in our channel, but you need to start somewhere, so this is, you can say, beginning of the thing. So for this first test print, I want to make exposure latitude, and as always, I put F11, and from F11 I make a 3 seconds intervals, and develop for 1 minute in each bath, and wash it up with the water, with the just 1 minute rinse, and just quickly hair dry it and get my first exposure results and usually they quite fine and I already can guess the exposure at least I can guess uh, aperture and usually I know it's around 10 seconds but I usually have this test print anyway to just make sure and this one is actually quite nice and what you can see here it's a difference with a huge amount of difference in light and I still have all details in uh, both channels, so basically with the 3 seconds or with the 18 seconds. And this is quite a unique thing for this type of 500T film, which is pushed one stop. And my experience with the 500T film, it's actually quite amazing film for printing in a darkroom on paper. 
It's incredibly forgiving and you don't really need a lot of corrections even if you shoot the daylight. In the dark room it's much more easier to correct stuff than with the scanning and so this is quite funny because in scanning most of the people cannot handle it but as you saw from the beginning of this video I actually have a direct control with the filters. So this is why also for fun I print some test scripts with all three channels with a rendition of the 10 and sometimes I mess up the numbering and it will be a really good idea if I have a numbers on the test printer. Not sure if I want to pick up one more project, but I think the test printer is not on the market and everybody just want a simple solution which doesn't really cost a train, which is nice looking and you can test print our small papers, for example 15 by 10 or something like this, and make a test like I make here. But as you can see from this colors I have a perfect representation of what each channel doing and in the cyan channel you honestly can see the shift in the yellow channel. Previously I never thought about it and I hope it's kind of a, like how it works but now I totally understand why you see the shift in the yellow channel because the blue channel also changed the response in yellow and your picture not only changing the cyan channel it's also changing the yellow channel in the same direction so it means you kind of need to compensate to open up the yellow channel if you're moving the cyan channel but in our case we just need a small correction in the one cyan channel by 20 points and you will get in a perfect exposure and a perfect color balance as always, I really like the results of the vibrant color on this film and I really like how my lens rendering. You have this amazing like glow and this lens just performs amazingly with a fully open aperture and creating this kind of a washed out picture with incredible sharpness at the same time. And I think this lens just works much better with the digital, but even on the film it's just pushing beyond the boundaries and it looks perfectly amazing. But going back a little bit to our diffusion, this is diffusion strip with a diffusion filter and as you can see it's not fully washed out and I have a different colors. But this one for later. Thank you for watching and see you in the next videos.